John Hennessy and today we're doing a little test drive in a brand new bone stock 2018 ZL1 Camaro 1LE and you may have heard about this car maybe seen the video on YouTube of the GM guys running it around the Nürburgring I believe they ran a 716 around the Nordschleife which is hugely impressive and so we've had this car for a few weeks we're getting ready it's getting ready to undergo our HP 850 upgrade and so we plan on uh, taking it out uh, to one of the local racetracks, maybe Circuit of the Americas here in the near future before we deliver to the client. But I just wanted to give a quick driving impression on my little loop that I do out here in the country. And you'll have to forgive, it looks like we got love bugs with these nasty little bugs that like to uh, get hooked up and uh, run into our windscreen. So it's probably going to get nasty, dirty. So. But that's okay we can wash it off all right so what are the differences between the stock zl1 and the 1le again there's a lot of stuff out on the internet i'll just give you kind of my impression uh, number one you cannot get the 1le with the 10 speed automatic at first i thought that kind of sucked because i really do like the 10 speed um, but this particular car they the, the guys at chevy did something really cool where they actually tightened up. I know they tightened up fifth and sixth gears significantly where they're usable on the street or the track. They're not mileage gears anymore. And they may have done it in fourth. I haven't looked up the, the ratio specs and compared them. But to me, one of the biggest uh, visceral engagement things about this car as compared to the stock manual ZL1 Camaro is the tighter ratios, especially in fifth and sixth gear. So. There's that, and if I get a chance to give a little blast on the highway on the way back to the shop, I'll, I'll give a little demonstration of that. Right now, we're driving the car in touring mode. I'm gonna drive it like that maybe for half the loop, then I'll kick it into sport. Nice and torquey. Power everywhere. I mean, I, th I think fourth gear is, is tighter. It does feel like it pulls through the gear quicker. Um, hello, Mr. Truck. This car does fairly well on a bumpy road, but I was driving it the other day and running it a little faster than I normally do. And uh, you know, hitting bumps on the highway at a, at a big speed, uh, you feel like you want to, the, the seat wants to eject you into the ceiling. So I think maybe I was a sport man when I was driving it that way. So I could probably, I might be able to daily a car like this in tour mode. I'd actually like it maybe a little bit softer. But again, this car is designed as a track car. Um, the seats are very comfortable and supportive, just like stock. And I think maybe on the interior, other than maybe the red belt, well, you get the red belt with the non of one le but everything on the interior seems pretty much like factory. Um, the big difference is obviously when you get into the, uh, the aerodynamics on the car, you've got a huge wing in the back, carbon fiber. It's really pretty cool looking. Um, here we go, we're getting into some bumpy stuff here. So, You've got the splitter up front. You have two huge canards that not only add downforce to the front of the car, but also direct airflow into the heat exchangers, which I think is pretty clever. Um, I read on the internet the other day, so of course it must be true, but I believe that it is. I read on the internet that GM is not gonna be able to sell this car in Europe because the, the safety people over in Europe are too worried that pedestrians might bang their shins against the uh, the canards or the splitter so sorry euro guys uh it's kind of crazy that you get to go you know 200 miles an hour down the autobahn but they're worried about pedestrians banging their shins against the one le i'm sure somebody will bring it in oh here's a nice big old bird you don't want to hit that i've hit a bird i had a bird going i've hit several birds i had a bird at the silver state 25 years ago going like 190 and if it was six inches higher it would have come through the windshield anyway back to the one le um, so you've got, I mean, you can feel the downforce the faster you go, the more. This car, if, I, if I'm going to sum up the ZL1 1LE in, in one hyphenated word, it would simply be hooked up. It's a balanced car. And I think the arrow, I think the arrow is a big part of that. Again, I think the suspension is maybe a little bit on the stiff side, um, but that's what it is. Uh, I don't have any experience with really pushing it hard. As good as a customer's car, I haven't taken it to a track. We've got a few twisties up here, and I'll shut up and try to do a little driving. But um, the car is a hooked-up, balanced car. When it hits a bump in mid-turn, it doesn't jostle around. 
the Vipers back in the day used to be notorious for really nasty bump, uh, called bump steer. You'd hit a bump mid-turn and you'd, you'd feel like it was going to knock the car off the lane. You know, on a windy, twisty road, the stock powers, you know, it's very, very balanced for the chassis and for the arrow. The additional horsepower will come in real handy for straight line. Love the, the torquiness of the supercharged V8. The power is always there. Again, the gearing is spot on. Heels bugs fast. Brakes seem real solid. You've got the stickier Goodyear tires. I don't have any experience with them. I was talking to Matt Farah a few weeks ago and he went to a press event where they were able to track the 1LE. And his impression was is that the tires, once they got up to temperature, were pretty sticky, but if you came into the pit lane and talked to an instructor for 30 seconds and went back out, they got cold pretty quickly. So I don't know. I, I don't have anything good about or good or bad to say about Goodyear's. They're a good company. Seem to make a good tire. If I owned one of these cars, I would probably try to put a set of Michelin Pilot Sport Cup twos on it to see if I could make any improvement in terms of if I was going to track it at you know, Circuit of the Americas or Texas World Speedway or you know the fun track which is what the car's really designed for. You've got the pad, you've got the uh, the rev matching. Um, people ask for these paddle shifters. Now this activates the rev matching, which is kind of cool. It's a neat novelty. If you know, makes any driver feel like a hero, it downshifts for you. Um, I do I do like on my GT350, GT350R, being able to manually blip the throttle, which you do in most cars anyway on a downshift, but this does a nice job of it. Just one last thing you gotta think about if you're on the track. Sport. 
see if it gets any noticeably rougher riding. Yeah, you can feel it. I mean, it's sport mode. I, I don't think I would ever drive in a sport mode on the street unless I'm on a perfectly smooth. You've got some really smooth roads. I just wanted just to kind of pass that along and just kind of just share that, um, you know, the amount of love and caring and just total strangers, total, a total stranger came with this boat and helped, helped me and my family boat. We had a boat into our house for probably the first three or four days. spite of 
our circumstances have been a huge blessing to see the amount of, of love and caring that one person is, 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 is given to others and multiplied by many, many thousands of people. The amount of stuff that the local churches have done. I mean, just watching on Facebook, I mean, literally watching the number of people that are posting on Facebook, hey, I have family at this, ha this address, I have friends at this address. A friend of mine from Dallas posted like six or seven addresses of different people he knew in Houston that were stranded and needed help. And I had somebody else on Facebook like, I got a boat, I got a jet ski, I got a whatever. And, you know, the cops and the firemen, God bless them, those guys are amazing heroes, but they can only do so much. And to see that that the the, you know, the, the Cajun Navy, uh, you know, guys with boats from I heard somebody from Ohio, people from Ohio were down here. So, anyway, I just wanted to just thank everybody out there on behalf of Houston and Texas. Um, we do live in a great country. We do have amazing people, and there's there's really is an amazing love for just strangers. Forget about politics forget about race forget about that stuff you see all that junk you know two weeks from now a week from now you flip on the tv or the internet and the fake news is going to say oh blah 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 these guys hate these guys no that's a small that's a, that's that's an insignificant group of people that, that they chose to put on the news that particular day i'm here to tell you that i witnessed dozens dozens of people personally that were out saving people and loving on people and i've seen hundreds if not thousands of people people like not going to work they actually go to people's house uh, we had we had 30 people come over to our house to help rip out sheetrock and take rotted uh, furniture and stuff out into the front yard just so we can try to get the the moisture and keep the you know keep our house from um, getting our house to, to dry out and uh it's incredible so i never wish harvey on anyone but I can say that the uh, silver lining is, has been the uh, outpouring of love from a lot of people. That's my, that's my story. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, yeah, Z011LE. It's a really cool car. I like it a lot. Would I, would I buy one for myself? You know, if I had all the money in the world, I probably would have one of these along with a, a Demon and a 350R and a lot of other cool stuff. Um, I would definitely consider this car if I wanted something that I could drive on the street that was very capable for the track. And so um, we'll be back once it's got another couple hundred horsepower and see what it does then. Thanks for tuning in.